Greetings, YouTube. So, I'm doing a little weapons project today, a really simple one. I picked up some of these, four of these, in fact, at a yard sale for a dollar, or four of them for a buck. Um, and I wanted to use them as an impact head on a mace. So I went out and got myself a piece of tubing, and I had the people at the hardware store cut the threads in deeper than normal, because they normally only go that far in. And so I wanted them to go in deeper than that. And unfortunately, I didn't judge it quite right. It didn't go in. I could have gone about another half inch. So one of the first things I wanted to do to see if I could get this to work at all was to crank this nut as far in as I could to see if I would give myself enough space to get this cap on the end because these are loose on that shaft. The only reason they are catching down here is because it widens out slightly to, to the un, uh, undone section and now I have burrs on this from, from my, my, my channel locks which I can take care of those. But um, uh, and there's bird and there's burrs in here. There's like little metal chips that would that that he couldn't get off when he did it at the store. And I left them there intentionally so that they would help me tighten this nut on. So you're kind of seeing this in part construction. So now that I have that on there, I'm scaring my cat in the background doing this left-handed because I'm, I'm right-handed. So, we have that much sticking out. Now you're thinking, that's not a lot. That's two full threads. And technically, all you really need on most things to get a firm connection is about a thread and a half. More is better, don't get me wrong, but that should be enough. So I'm going to now thread this on and then tighten it up and tighten it in place and then touch up this and then probably come up with some kind of a, a covering for this grip because this cap's only going to go on to about there and I don't want the, the exposed threads to be near my hand because this is where I'm going to grip it. So I want to cover this up with something um, and then we'll be done. It'll be a very simple task. Now I just weighed this out. Each one of these nuts weighs 156 grams, so it's a total of 624 grams of nuts. Each one of these weighs 89 grams, so that's about 180 grams of additional steel, plus the tube itself, which I unfortunately did not weigh before I put this on here, because again, I wanted to see if I could make it work at all, and I can. Um, so now I'm going to put that on there, and I'm going to touch this up with a file so that it doesn't have any major burrs. Um, and then I'm going to find myself some kind of a coverage for this, put the cap on, and we will have created a very quick and dirty post-apocalyptic geometric mace um, hearkening to a number of medieval and ancient, even more ancient, like bronze era geometric mace heads that had a very similar look. Of course, they wouldn't have been made this in a particular manner, but I'm showing you how you can, you can adapt modern materials to create a functioning weapon. So, next up, um, final assembly, I guess. Okay, I've taken a piece of that yoga mat, which my wife has given to me, and wrapped it here, and I'm going to use a piece of this tire um, uh, tube to cover the whole shebang, and then put the, the, that in there. Frustratingly, I can't seem to locate my black electrical tape. I'm probably staring at it in my toolbox. But because I know that I am looking for X, my brain is filtering, filtering out everything that isn't X. It's a problem I have. I've always had this problem. I fixate on things because of my upbringing. And it, sometimes it's hard for me to break out of that. Sometimes I actually have to have my wife look for things for me because I'm looking at the object and I can't find it. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can find the black electrical tape. I've got the head installed. Uh, this one is a little bit of, out of the sink because when I was tightening this down, it turned that slightly. I can live with that. That's okay. Um, so I'm going to see if I can find the back of the black electrical tape. And if I can, I will use it. If I can't, I will either use the yellow or I will find a solution other than that. Okay, the mat proved to be too thick and grippy. So I tried some leather, which still proved to be too thick. So I just went with duct tape and I put a couple of layers of duct tape under here um, to give it a little, to fill it out slightly because this is, it's, it's got a slight 
There's a slight gap here, but I don't have to worry about. And I've taped both ends because I did, in fact, find my black electrical tape, which was, as I predicted, right in front of my nose. Um, I just started picking up every single object in the drawer until I laid my hand on it because I just wasn't seeing it. I don't know why. So there you go. This is the completed uh, one-handed mace. And let's see if I get the scale over here. And we'll fire the scale up. And here we go. Make sure it's not. So we have 1.479 kilograms. So that's not too bad. One and a half kilograms. Um, so that it makes this a decidedly heavy uh, one-handed weapon. Now I'll go take a shot in the in the mirror so you can see how it compares to my body. Okay, so I'm holding the camera in a somewhat awkward manner, but I'm in frame. There we go, in frame. So this is what you can see. It's in my hand. Uh, and it's the one and a half kilograms. A lot of this weight is definitely in the head. Um, this is going to have a really heavy impact. And it, this is, I've taken off the burrs, so they're not going to hurt you. And the grip is comfortable, fits my hand well. Uh, it's like a one inch tube, I believe. It's a one inch pipe. Um, and uh, I like quite like the way it looks. It's got that rough and tumble post-apocalyptic vibe going on, which is what I'm going for. Um, and it will work well with my uh, stop sign shield or my riot shield. And definitely has that, you know, once you hit somebody with this thing, they are not going to get back up. 